Oh, I only, we are almost out of these cards. This is about that winter training camp. It is open to all events. Uh, our head coach is a good ball coach. We got throws coach, Tor Anami, who's speaking uh, in Plaza 4 right now as our uh, jumps coach. So we do have uh, some pretty good coaches there, and then a lot of our athletes help out as well. It's between $10 and $15 for two and a half hours, which is fairly reasonable to get some uh, preseason training done. Um, I'm Peter Miller, like you said. Uh, I'm just going to introduce myself a little bit to start here. Uh, 2003 Rochester Century graduate. Um, if any of you guys follow uh, high school throwing, Century had a pretty good tradition for a while. Uh, we had Carl Erickson, who was, still is the state all-time record holder in the discus, who graduated a few years before me. Um, and so I had some pretty good people to learn with there. I had the pleasure then from going, going from there to the University of Minnesota, where I got to throw uh, for five years. Um, I will show you this. This will get, should make you guys laugh. This is how I competed in college. Um, if any of you guys ever saw me compete, you'll know what's coming. But uh, I like track. I like to throw. And I have a tendency to get a little bit excited. Um, that's how I coach as well. Um, I get excited. I try and make it fun. I try and have a good time. And I uh, try and get some success out of my athletes. Uh, I graduated from the University of Minnesota with a degree in kinesiology. I also studied chemistry there. Um, Through shot and disc. Uh, now I coach at River Falls. I've coached throw since 2008, and I've been an assistant in the strength and conditioning department for the last two years. Um, how I got into strength and conditioning, uh, why, why I started studying this, why I became so interested. I have five herniated discs in my lumbar. If you guys know what that is, that's a pretty severe injury. Um, I did that. Started my senior year of high school. I threw at three meets my senior year of high school. Was still able to train a little bit kind of got rid of it, had some cortisone injections, um, and was able to train up at the University of Minnesota. Didn't have any problems for my first four years, and then right after indoors, my fourth year, um, I re-injured it to the point that I could barely walk, um, had to get another cortisone injection, do a lot of PT, um, but still wanted to throw, was actually told I'd never compete again, and got voted captain of the team at Minnesota, and that was a pretty big honor for me, and so I wanted to stay involved as much as I could, so I lost about 50 pounds, Totally changed how I trained, pretty much had to train myself um, and really dove into the science behind strength and conditioning and how you can change things due to injury and that kind of stuff and it really got me interested in that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, then right that summer I decided that I needed to learn more so I interned with the University of Minnesota Strength and Conditioning Department. Uh, Cal Dietz is the head strength coach for Olympic sports there, he's great, he helped me with his presentation. Uh, then I've helped out at a couple of high schools, Minnetonka High School, which runs a very different system. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Um, high intensity training, it's uh, kind of a lot of machines, uh, very high reps, uh, single set type stuff, which is not exactly what I'll talk about today, but I definitely do employ a little bit of that during my year-long plan. Um, I personal trained for a while. I'm glad I'm done with that. Um, and now I currently, along with coaching the throws, I write and supervise the strength training for all track and cross country actually, which we'll get into a little bit. I'm sure that shocks some people. Um, a little bit of our results. Uh, I'll, I'll start this off by saying this really has nothing to do with me. We had a great group of athletes last year who really bought in hard, trained hard, trained together, um, and finally had somewhat of an organized training system. That's pretty much all I brought. It's not some super advanced strength training. You're not going to see anything crazy in this presentation. The last year, this shows what kind of the main points of my, my presentation are supervision, teaching quality movements, that kind of stuff. It's the most important part of strength and conditioning. And this shows what can happen if, if that's employed and if it's run fairly well and if there's communication between the, the people that coach on the track and then the people that coach in the weight room. Um, we did set 23 new school records last year. That was basically one out of every three events we competed in. We set a new school record in. Um, most impressive probably was our women's 4x4, four four, who broke our school record indoors by 7 seconds and outdoors by 10 seconds. They also ran 18 seconds faster than the year before with uh, two seniors, a junior, and one freshman. And the freshman was not 18 seconds faster than the girl that ran the year before. She was fast, but not even the fastest girl in the relay. Um, and that 346.93, which took fourth in the D3 NCAA meet, um, is actually the second fastest time in the history of the state of Wisconsin for college behind only uh, UW Madison's school record. So we had some pretty good success last year. Again, that doesn't mean I'm good at what I do. Um, here's kind of the main points that I think for strength and conditioning to work, these are the things that have to happen. You have to have athletes that are willing to learn, change, and put in the time. Strength and conditioning is not easy. 
they're going to get sore, it's going to be hard. Even with lightweight, if you do enough reps and you're doing them right, you're going to get sore. Uh, the next one, as a coach, you have to be do, willing to do the same thing. You have to be willing, you guys are already willing, you're here, um, you're listening, hopefully not making fun of me too much. Um, and you have to be willing to change, and then you have to be willing to put in the time to plan out what they're going to do. Um, it's more than just let's add strength and conditioning to what we're doing on the track. You have to be willing to work with the track coaches, make some sacrifices on their volume to add this volume. Um, like I said here, strength training must be part of a larger program design. You can't just add it on. That's just going to cause overtraining, and that's a bad deal. And then there's no substitute for supervision. That's the biggest thing. You can't write a strength training program that's anything and expect a kid to go do it on their own. One, they're probably not going to know what they're doing. Two, how hard are they going to push themselves? Maybe some kids will push themselves hard, but the kids that aren't are maybe the ones that are going to see the best result out of it if you have some supervision. Um, I'll just go into some basic physiological components that are necessary for strength training. I apologize. I'm sure some of you know a lot of this stuff, but some of you may not have an idea. So I'm going to blow through these pretty quick. If you have that CD that they handed at the beginning of, of the weekend, all this stuff is on there, so you have all this. So I'm just going to try and blow through it as quick as I can. ATP, muscle energy, necessary for any activity. Um, the energy systems, which I'll talk about how you use that muscle energy to create movement, create strength, that kind of stuff. ATP, CP is your shortest energy system. Under 10 seconds, 100 meters long jump throws. That's your biggest energy system, 55. Uh, you do, once you get into 100 meters, you start to use some of the other stuff, most likely, unless you're like Usain Bolt or something. Uh, glycolytic is under two minutes, so basically everything up to the 800 is glycolytic. Um, doesn't use oxygen, but uses some different uh, components, different body processes to cycle through the ATP and uh, rejuvenate your energy system. And then aerobic <laughs> is endurance athletes. Um, anything over two minutes basically. They all start at the same time, but you lose ATP, CP first, then you lose glycolytic and you work into aerobic. But they all start processing ATP at this, exactly the same time whenever you start moving. Uh, strength training theory. Strength is the ability to produce force. It does have magnitude and a direction, so an amount and where you're moving that or where you're pushing that force. Uh, it's broken down into five categories. Uh, strength endurance, high volume, that kind of stuff, anything over 10 to 15 reps. Power is the ability to produce force quickly. Uh, train that five to 10 reps. You can go five to 10 reps as heavy as you can go, or you can go pretty light, 50 to 70%, and try and move it with maximal effort. That's uh, one thing I think a lot of people don't realize is you don't have to have the most amount of weight on the bar that you can do, but if you're moving it as hard as you can, you're gonna get very beneficial results. Speed of movement, quality movements are just as important as the total amount of mass moved. Uh, maximal or absolute strength, that's what maximal strength, it's pretty self-explanatory, as much weight as you can do regardless of speed. You want to try and move it as fast as possible, but if you're bench pressing 405 like this, that's as fast as you can move it, you're still getting a lot of gains out of that. Um, general strength is the ability to overcome body weight, so your core strength, your squat jumps, your body weight squats, all those kind of circuits and stuff that you guys probably do a lot of on the track. And then elastic or reactive strength, um, plyometrics, that kind of stuff, anything where the muscle loads and then explodes out of it is elastic strength. Very important for track and field. Pretty much every track and field event requires a large amount of elastic strength. Uh, strength th training theory continued. Uh, it leads to muscular adaptations. That's what benefits you. Honestly, in a high school season, you're not gonna get much hypertrophy, which is the first one talked about. 13 weeks is what the Minnesota high school season is. You're not gonna actually increase much muscle mass. But what you can do is the other stuff. You can increase joint strength a lot, which is great for the jumps, for running, for all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can increase or improve muscle fiber recruitment. That's the biggest thing I think that for track and field is, especially the distance events and that kind of stuff, is the more muscle fibers that you can recruit with the same amount of effort, everything's become more efficient. You're gonna be able to move a little bit further or a little bit easier for the same amount of effort. And that's, that's where you make your big gains. And then that's tied into neural adaptation. So you just becoming more efficient in your movements, being able to move better, being able to move smoother, being able to change your movements when told. I think that's a big thing that people don't realize about strength training, especially in the technical events, which every event, including running, is technical. You gotta be strong enough to be able to feel how you're moving in order to make those changes. And that's where strength and conditioning within a 13 week season can make a lot of adaptations. Uh, again, all of these directly re relate to all track events by improving key technical, like I just talked about, and then physiological aspects. They improve all three energy systems. Um, 
which seems weird that bench pressing 405 can improve your uh, aerobic energy system, but it does. Um, so here's how they benefit each, each group individually. Um, I kind of combined the ATP, CP groups, so sprints, hurdles, jumps. Well-designed strength training program it increases ground force development, which is what every event and track is. You're trying to get your mass moving forward or moving in some direction, so you need to push into the ground to do that. Newton's laws, equal and opposite reaction. I'm pretty sure we all weigh less than the Earth does, so you're going to get pushed forward. It's not going to get pushed back. Um, increased strength to weight ratio equals increased force creation. Force is mass times acceleration, so if you can increase the amount of force you put in the ground, you can increase your acceleration as long as you're not increasing your mass too much. Um, so yet again, increased acceleration. Ground force development, lean mass and acceleration equal increases in speed and dynamic capabilities. So if you're not putting out a ton of mass, but you're increasing your neural adaptations, your neural efficiency, you're gonna be able to move a lot more efficiently and a lot easier. Um, strength training leads directly to increases in ATP, CP, energy system function and recovery. I think if you're training, most strength training sets are gonna be completed between five and 25 seconds, which is mostly done within that ATP, CP system. Gains in strength directly correlate to gains in performance. Uh, throws, I think this is the most obvious. I think every throws coach in here realizes that you, you've got to be strong to throw. Is 